your money may not be safe in the banks. Well, honestly, I think we already knew that by now, right? Which reminds me, don't let me forget to tell you about the J.P. Morgan shocking discovery of Frank Founder accused of defrauding and shutting down college financial aid. Because, uh, yeah, that's a big one. But if your money isn't safe in the banks, then where will it be secure and protected? Well, if you said in the hands of the government, then you're going to be completely not surprised to find out what I have to tell you about how the government tends to have their way with your funds. And if you are a Social Security recipient, well, then you're not going to want to miss this. You're going to want to pay close attention and listen to what I have to tell you. Because, yes, the federal government borrows Social Security funds, according to Verify, and the federal government does. They skim a little bit off the top every now and then. But the bigger and better question is, are they required to pay back the money? And if so, do they owe us interest? So there's no doubt that we are all concerned about our money and how much longer we have before the S hits the fan. But for one 27-year-old living the low-income lifestyle in Atlanta, Georgia, her based on a true story, cost of living crisis, living below the poverty line, $35,000 luxury tiny home may be a direction that even I might consider as a way to help reduce my monthly overhead expenses. Not only that, I will also be doubling down on my online social media jobs where I've been able to earn money just from posting comments to Facebook and uploading tweets to Twitter. Facebook and Zuckerberg are cutting checks, so go check the mail. Approved $725 million and up to $1,000 is what I've heard will be coming to those who submit their applications for simply having a Facebook account in the past. I mean, really, who hasn't had a Facebook account, you know? Well, this year may end up shaping up to be not so bad after all. 2023 will be the year of wealth or new money. I mean, shoot, we're even in a bull market run right now. And if you haven't gotten your free stocks from Moomoo, link in the description. But folks are about to start cashing in big money. And in some instances, all you have to do is be black, gay and post pics to your meta timeline. And you could be a multimillionaire in no time. No skill required. Now, you guys all know that I'm just kidding, right? I mean, besides the fact that the stock market is on the rise and the S&P has seen a 20% increase over the last few days, but the rest of that stuff was, was just for fun. <laughs> but the links are in the description and the money is real. So go get you some before it's all gone. And forget about how you might feel like you're poor and do what Precious just did. Because she's living in the lap of luxury in her custom-built tiny home in her Atlanta, Georgia backyard that she says costs zero dollars, zero dollars to live in. And she said that she forgets she's living in a shed after having built her tiny dream home during the Chinese year of the bat. I mean, uh, <clears throat> 2020. When Precious plotted and staked out a nice little piece of land for her 296 square foot house in Atlanta, Georgia, that if you didn't hear me the first time, let me mention it to you again. She lives in it entirely for free. That's zero dollars a month. In what is now her primary residence, Precious has all her mortgage payments, property taxes, and utility bills covered and paid for by the rent that she's collecting from the tenants that occupy her main home on the property. Now, that 1,400 square foot investment property is her ticket to financial freedom. And although her new domicile is just under 300 square feet, she designed it extremely efficiently to maximize every square inch of her super affordable tiny home. And we can all pretty much do the same. But it is important to note that although some major cities are easing regulations on tiny homes to encourage more housing supply, many still restrict what you can and cannot do with your own land. So be sure to check your local zoning codes for your property address through your city's local zoning map. But beware, if nothing comes up, then you'll need to call your city's building and planning department before considering your financing options, picking out your structure and determining your design needs. Most importantly, don't forget to get multiple bids and shop for the best price and reputation from reputable contractors. And when it is all said and done, make sure that you secure your return on investment. 
Now, Precious said that before moving in, she ended up renting out her tiny home for almost two years and grossed about $32,000, which nearly was enough to cover all the costs of what she spent to build the home. But the ROI doesn't have to only be money related. It could be that you have more flexibility in the form of a home office or even a separate living space for aging parents or guests. Remember, the goal is to have fun with designing the perfect space for your ideal lifestyle. But remember that in the event your home were to possibly go into foreclosure due to some unfortunate job loss or major disruption to your income, your completely paid for tiny house tucked away in your backyard would need to be relocated or else you could lose all that hard work and capital investment. And eviction is on the rise. And so the possibility of vagrants and squatters stepping in and calling your tiny space their new home could potentially pose some added stress and big problems for those looking to get ahead and break free of the never ending revolving debt cycle. It's important that we do all we can to protect our assets, our wealth and investments, safeguard all that we have worked hard for. Like many have mentioned to me recently after the close call with the government budget and debt ceiling crisis that put many fixed income, Social Security, SSA, SSI, SSDI, U.S. Treasury recipients in intense panic mode. And for good reason, when living or better yet, trying to survive on the government paycheck, the paycheck plan, because I'm not really sure if I would call it living, any hiccup interruption or unexpected emergency expense can really wipe out your savings and cash reserves if any even exist oh yeah and watch out for thieves too and no i'm not talking about the folks in washington wearing the red and blue ties in their two thousand dollar suits no these are ordinary people out here trying to take all that you have worked for crime news reports that a federal court has ordered 63-year-old Marilyn Harry to repay more than half a million dollars to the Social Security Administration. After saying that the woman from Crown Point, New Mexico, pled guilty to defrauding the program. And back in the mid-1990s, Harry's father passed away. And her father was receiving Social Security payments, which should have ended when he died. But Harry hid the fact that her father died, allowing her to collect his Social Security benefits on his behalf. And Marilyn Harry also admitted to opening multiple debit cards to use the stolen funds that she collected all the way up until the end of 2021. And that added up to a lot of money. Over the course of 25 years, she took more than $551,000 from the program. And so according to the U.S. Department of Justice, when she was confronted, Harry quickly admitted wrongdoing. But now, Marilyn Harry will be on unsupervised probation for five years and she has to pay back the money. But odds are it's going to be too great a sum for the senior to ever have a chance at repaying in her lifetime. Man, I wonder if they will make her pay it back with interest, too, <laughs> which is a widely popular question that I keep getting asked often over on the Patreon channel with my wife, Squirrel Tribe, or better yet, Michelle, <laughs> where we are discussing all of these topics and so many more and also engaging in live chat. A lot of folks have already signed up and we're looking forward to seeing you guys over there too. And as a result of what we all have experienced lately in recent weeks, amid concerns that a now averted U.S. debt default would have led to delayed or missing Social Security checks, many people have asked about the program's funding. And one person wanted to know whether the federal government borrows Social Security funds. Good question. So I did some digging and it turns out that, yes, the federal government borrows Social Security funds for sure. But what about its repayment terms? Well, the answer is also yes. They are required to pay the money back with interest, albeit very, very low Interest. And according to verify this, Social Security is primarily funded through a dedicated payroll tax, which is deducted from a person's paycheck. And the program also receives funding from income taxes that some beneficiaries have to pay on a portion of their benefits, as well as interest from the trust funds investment holdings. I guess it's a good thing that the stock market is on the rise. Now, Social Security income is deposited into two financial accounts called trust funds, the Old Age Survivors Insurance, or the OASI, trust fund, and the Disability Insurance, DI, trust fund. 
The trust funds are used to pay out Social Security benefits and cover administrative costs. And according to the Social Security Administration, they're saying that while the trust funds hold money that isn't needed in the current year to pay benefits and other expenses, by law, that money is invested in special treasury bonds that are guaranteed by the U.S. government and earn interest. Well, so long as they don't default. Now, according to the SSA, those bonds basically are an IOU from the government to Social Security. Okay. Now, Mary Johnson, Social Security and Medicare policy analyst for the Senior Citizens League, told Verify that, in other words, the Social Security Trust Fund, which is what is authorized to pay benefits, has been loaning money to the U.S. government. So when a person buys a treasury bond, they are also loaning money to the U.S. government for a set period of time and will get it back in the future with interest. And the treasury needs to borrow money when the federal government's budget is in a deficit, meaning its spending exceeds revenues from taxes and other sources like we have just experienced here recently. And according to the Center for Budget Policy and Priorities, the CBPP, the Treasury always uses whatever cash is on hand, whether that's from Social Security contributions or other sources, to pay the government's bills before it borrows more money from the public. And the public refers to all lenders that are not federal trust funds, including individuals, the Federal Reserve System, and foreign investors. Now, some people have claimed over the years that the federal government's borrowing from Social Security equates to stealing. But what do you guys think? Johnson called these claims misinformation and that the Treasury is obligated to pay back the money it borrows with interest. <laughs> now, whether or not it does or will be able to do so in the future is a whole different story. And although the SSA says the federal government has never failed to do so, we came pretty darn close to going bust just a few days ago. But the, that interest is income for Social Security, which helps to provide funding for future benefits, according to Johnson. And throughout its history, Social Security has generally taken in more money than it paid out in benefits. But the program has been running cash deficits since 2010 meaning that its total tax revenue has fallen short of benefit payments. And as Social Security runs through those cash deficits, the trust funds will redeem their treasury securities and the treasury will have to borrow funds from the public to cover the shortfalls, according to the Peter G. Peterson Foundation. Now, Social Security's board of trustees estimated in its most recent annual report that the combined trust fund will run out of cash reserves by 2034. But that does not mean that the program will go broke, as people have claimed for many, many years. Perhaps this is some form of damage control. But if the reserves are exhausted, Social Security programs will continue to pay benefits out of annual tax revenue. And thus, why we have 87,000 new armed IRS agents. And the benefits payments would just have to be lower as well, amounting to about 80% of what beneficiaries would normally be entitled to collect in 2034. So on top of high costs and high prices and inflation, they're going to pay you less money, despite having paid in from your paychecks all along, which may be yet another contributing factor behind why so many people are preparing for early filing for Social Security. But does it make sense for you? Well, if you are 62 years old and think that you might need the money and are afraid that it will run out before your full retirement age, then I want you to listen to this. Age 62 is the earliest age at which you can sign up for Social Security, and it's an age many seniors choose when it comes to filing for benefits. But the biggest or main problem with claiming Social Security at age 62, though, is that you'll have to accept a reduced monthly benefit for life. And that's because you're only first entitled to your complete monthly benefit based on your wage history. And once you reach full retirement age, or FRA, but... FRA doesn't kick in until 66, 67, or somewhere in between, depending on the year in which you were born. So, filing for Social Security at age 62 could end up being very detrimental to your retirement. And if you slash your monthly benefit, you might end up pretty cash-strapped as a senior in the absence of having a robust nest egg, on top of receiving 20% less than what you had expected. But despite that hit, there's one situation where it absolutely makes sense to file for Social Security at age 62. 
The exception to the rule, according to The Motley Fool, is that for many seniors, it pays to wait until FRA or even beyond to claim Social Security to score a higher monthly payday for life. And for each year that you delay your filing up to the age of 70, your Social Security benefit will get an 8% boost and a permanent one at that. But if your health is poor to the point where you don't anticipate living a very long life, then it generally pays to err on the side of claiming Social Security early. So by filing for Social Security at age 62, you might slash your monthly budget by up to 30% compared to what you get at FRA. But you'll also start to get your money up to five years earlier. And that could result in a higher lifetime payout if you end up passing away at a relatively young age. Let's just say you're entitled to a monthly benefit of $2,000 at, at an FRA of 67, right? Well, if you sign up for Social Security at age 62, you'll only end up with $1,400 a month. And sure, you might think that you can afford that $600 monthly hit, but it's important to look at the big picture. So let's imagine you only end up living until age 75. In that case, you'll end up with $26,400 more in Social Security income by virtue of taking benefits at 62 despite slashing those monthly payments by $600. And I know it's a tough call to make, but being in poor health doesn't always mean facing a shorter life expectancy. So that's the risk that you have to take by filing for Social Security early. But if you don't expect to live a very long life, it generally pays to claim benefits as soon as you can. I mean, shoot, with the way that they're polluting the airs and injecting certain substances into our foods and our bodies, well, maybe they don't want us to live as long anyway. But if your health is average or good, then you may want to consider waiting until FRA to claim Social Security. But if that's not the case, filing early at least guarantees that you're starting to get your money from a younger age, and that might end up working out to your advantage from a lifetime benefit standpoint. I hope you all enjoyed this video and got a lot of important information out of it. I will include valuable links in the description down below for you all to have access to and more ways of earning more money, increasing your income, supplementing and ways of making money online and simple and easy side hustle opportunities. Don't forget to come check us out on Patreon where Michelle, Squirrel Tribe and I are posting more and more videos and other content that we just can't upload here. And you don't have to be a member to watch either. There are loads of free videos and posts, plus we have started a new live chat video option that gives you all the opportunity to meet and talk to us in real time and discuss in a round table like format all these important topics that affect our health, our wealth, and our personal well-being each and every day. Or if you just want somebody to talk to, we're here for you folks. There are limited seats, so if you want to join in on the conversation, it will be best not to delay. Until next time, you guys take care, be safe, be kind to one another, and I'll see you real soon.